the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good Saturday evening, everybody. Watching DC News Now at 9 o'clock, I'm Ben Dennis. We begin tonight the latest from a shooting at a youth football game in Prince George's County. One man is dead. A young child is now recovering from their injuries. Our Dave Laval reports from Oxon Hill. Prince George's County police have no doubt they'll find the gunman responsible for Saturday's shooting here at Potomac High School as another family is notified a loved one won't return home. A person is deceased on Father's Day weekend and a five year old is in the hospital. Prince George's County Police Chief Malik Aziz on the deadly carnage caused during Saturday morning's charity youth football tournament at Potomac High School. Verbal altercation escalated into one individual uh, producing a weapon uh, and shooting that individual. Gunfire also wounded the child. They appear to be at this at this stage uh, to know each other uh, and bring some issue that occurred outside of this game and brought it to a game where young people, seven year olds, uh, were playing a football game. Police did not say if the two victims are related. We need to get these guns um, off of our streets. County Executive Angela also Brooks again called for tougher gun legislation. This particular dispute today, one that years ago would have resulted in someone punching someone else in the nose. Now, because of the presence of guns and because of the easy access that too many people have to guns, becomes violent and tragic. Police are still looking for the gunman. As of right now, there's no description of that person. However, also Brooks filed one thing from police. They will absolutely bring closure to this case. We expect to apprehend uh, a suspect in pretty short order. The event had security, but not police. County leaders told us that could change as a result of the shooting. At Potomac High School, Dave Laval. DC News Now. Attorney details, Dave, thank you for your reporting. In Montgomery County, fire officials say that a pickup truck ended up on Metro rail tracks in a crash late last night. Check out these photos. Officials say the two cars were involved in that crash near Hungerford Drive and Manakee Street. This is in Rockville. One of them ended up driving through the fence and ending up on the tracks. You see it right there. Officials say that nobody was hurt, but there was some damage to Metro's property on top of that fence. Train traffic was stopped for a time during that investigation. And a tragic story in the district. A young child was found dead inside of a vehicle yesterday evening. Police say they responded to Galloway Street in South Dakota Avenue in Northeast. A child there reportedly unconscious. When police got there, they found a four-year-old boy unresponsive inside of a vehicle. This is also near the Fort Totten Metro Station. The boy died on scene. The cause not yet confirmed by medical officials. The investigation is ongoing. In Arlington, Virginia State Police say that a bear was hit and killed on the northbound lanes of I-395 earlier today. Some images shot right here near the Pentagon. Officials received a port of the dead bear on the roadside around 210 near the 8C exit near Pentagon City. This is obviously the moments before that. Photos came in from that area from a viewer. Several bears have been spot in our region in June, including one bear's body that Arlington officials said had been illegally dumped along a trail. And with temperatures in the 90s, we have some tips to help you stay cool. Cooling centers and shelters across the district, they are open. You should, of course, stay hydrated, drink plenty of fluids, avoid the outdoors when possible. And if you do go outside, wear light fitted clothing. People are first protect yourself, right? The second thing is get out there and check on your neighbors, your neighbors, seniors, children, and pets. We're going to have an extended heat emergency, and we're really just trying to get the message out. You can also call 311 if you need a ride to a cooling center or shelter. Time is 9.05 on the dot. Over to your weather now with Scott Sumner. Scott, you know, you kind of freaking me out here saying the temperatures possibly triple digits later this week. Yeah, well, look at the heat indices already. They're already at 104 and 109. Now, granted, that's out west, out in the southwest. And you say, well, Scott, that's not very uncommon out there. And you're right to a degree. Uh, but I'm just showing you this because, and generally I don't show national maps, but I want to give an indication that it is hot everywhere. San Antonio, 92 degrees, Memphis at 90 degrees. And 
This is the heat indices here as we get into the early evening. So it was a little hotter than this just a couple of hours ago out in Kansas City and Oklahoma City. Now heat alerts. There have been a couple and the closest one near us is an extensive heat watch for uh, parts of Western PA and parts of uh, West Virginia. Now there's also heat advisories here and excessive heat warnings out in the desert southwest. So I just want to get you prepared. Now this is a new graphic here. Uh, heat risk on Monday. Here's the category and what the colors mean. Wherever you see orange, moderate heat risk is uh, going to be seen here. Minor are a little bit closer out towards uh, the eastern shore and the southern shores of Maryland. But look, interior areas, major to extreme heat risk. So yes, uh, the heat is on, as they say, and it's going to be with us not just on Monday for much of the week, if not the entire week. We'll talk about that coming up in the full forecast. Under the cover, Scott, thank you. Meantime, it's those first responders battling the heat in their heavy gear getting dangerously close to hot flames today. This is video overhead of a house fire in Alexandria's Bellhaven neighborhood. We're told this happened on Yale Drive. It started in a carport that was attached to the house. Thankfully, no injuries there. But a Prince George's County fire officials say that one person is now dead tonight. Another hurt after this house fire. Crews showed up to DePaul Place in College Park just after 5 this morning. This is also near the Paint Branch Golf Complex. There's intense flames bringing part of the roof down. One man was hospitalized with critical injuries. The update tonight, he later died at the hospital. Another adult was hurt. The cause is under investigation. Police in the district, they're looking for a shooter who opened fire and hit two people last night. This is near the Safeway on Georgia Avenue in Petworth. Happened around 7.30. Police say a man and a woman were shot, both conscious when police arrived. Police are looking for a man who was last seen wearing dark clothes, wearing white shoes, and driving a white car. Right now, the motive is still unknown. And new tonight, a tradition running over three decades in the district, the mother of all yard sales in where? Adams Morgan. All yard sales were within walking distance of each other in the neighborhood in Northwest. Those sales featuring artwork, furniture, kitchenware, vintage clothes, People we spoke to say that the event is a staple for the local community. Brings out our community, really blends the community together, not only by selling what you don't want and making some money and bringing treasures to somebody else, but it really melts our community together. We get to know our neighbors, we get to know people who've moved into the neighborhood. It builds character and builds community. And who can debate that? Who doesn't, what doesn't sell rather at the end of the day is going to be donated to local charities. Organizers provide a truck that offers to pick up and donate those items. In the Commonwealth, the Virginia Department of Health has released a new report on that E. coli outbreak at Lake Anna. It happened over the Memorial Day weekend. Dozens of cases have been cited, some with serious symptoms. The most recent result found that there are 25 confirmed cases of E. coli's infection five of which more serious symptoms. They believe others may have been infected. Now, those who have been infected, they range from one years old to 45 years old. 76% of the cases are under the age of 18. There is some good news here. Recent test results show there is not a public health hazard at the lake right now, but the state is continuing to collect and test water samples. And we're just days away from primary election day in Virginia. Voters will cast their ballots in key races. They include the GOP primary for U.S. Senate and several other key congressional races. Here are a few reminders for voters before heading to the polls. First, all voters will need to bring a valid ID. Polls will be open across the Commonwealth from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. on election day, Tuesday. You can also vote early at your local registrar's office today. If you need to, you can also register to vote while casting your ballot. And with summer break upon us, students will be away from their routines and the sense of security they may feel at school. Fairfax County, will they share advice to look out for signs of child abuse and neglect? DC News Now Haley Mylon has more. Yeah, the County Department of Family Services says that a lot of kids will be unsupervised this summer because of the cost of summer camps and child care and that active, responsible adults like yourself can make a huge change in kids' lives. County officials say to be aware of the signs of abuse like bruises on children or other significant behavioral changes like withdrawing or becoming fearful. 
Know that children eight and younger shouldn't be unsupervised in homes, cars, playgrounds or yards. Spread awareness about the county's body safety classes, which are virtual and can improve kids safety knowledge. And know that kids in the county are eligible for free meals at locations across Fairfax. And lastly, the department says that responsible adults can make a huge impact by monitoring teens. And if you're a parent and you need help within Fairfax County, you can call the county's hotline at 703-324-7720 Monday through Friday for resources. In the newsroom, I'm Haley Mylon, DC News Now.